Hi everyone. Today in this video let us discuss Dabigatron. What is this drug Dabigatron? This drug is classified as anticoagulant agent. This Dabigatron is available in an ester form such as Dabigatron etexylate. This drug is classified as thrombin inhibitor as this drug reduces the activity of thrombin thereby it reduces the coagulation cascade. Since this drug acts as anticoagulant, Dabigatron can be used to control thrombotic events. So this drug is particularly used in the conditions like deep vein thrombosis which is associated with any surgical procedures like hip and knee surgery. And even this drug can be given in embolic conditions like pulmonary embolism. So this drug can be used for the treatment of both deep vein thrombosis as well as pulmonary embolism. At the same time, this drug can also be used as a prophylactic in the patients with any hip and knee surgery to prevent the formation of thrombotic events. Similarly, this drug can also be used in one of the condition non-valvular atrial fibrillation. In this condition, because of increased contraction of atria, it may increase the risk of stroke within the brain. Otherwise, it can also increase the events like embolism, which are fatal to the patient. To control these thrombotic events, again, dabigatron etexylate can be given in non-valvular atrial fibrillation. But this drug should not be given in the patients with mechanical prosthetic heart valve as this drug reduces further cardiac functionality in such patients. And this drug is available as capsule. This capsule should be swallowed completely and it should not be broken, it should not be crushed and even it should not be chewed. As this dabigatron etexylate is a prodrug, it is formulated in a capsule form which should be swallowed completely and within the body, this drug is going to be converted into its active metabolite Dabigatron. So today in this video we are going to see how this drug acts, what are the important precautions, side effects, doses, what is the doses adjustment in the renal failure, all these things we will discuss in this video. So let us start with the precautions of Dabigatron. This drug Dabigatron etexylate is a prodrug within the liver, it is going to be metabolized to produce the active metabolite Dabigatron. This is a simple ester hydrolysis which is significantly carried by cytochrome P450 system. But since so many drugs are substrates for CYP450 system, there may be a chance of interactions with this drug. Fortunately, this drug is having no drug interactions at the metabolism. But one of the important precautions of this drug is that this dabigatron shows interaction at P glycoprotein. This P-glycoprotein is a efflux pump which increases the excretion of the drugs from the body. Here dabigatron can also be excreted by this pump into the urine so that the excretion of this drug is highly influenced by P-glycoprotein. Now few of the drugs may act as inducers for this P-glycoprotein. For instance, rifampin is one of the anti-tuberclot drug which increases the expression of P-glycoprotein. By increased expression of P-glycoprotein, Dabigatron is more efflexed, resulting in the increased excretion of this drug. So, in presence of P glycoprotein inducers such as rifampin, this drug should be avoided as it reduces the efficacy, thereby it increases the risk of stroke and thrombotic events. Dabigatron is going to be excreted by the renal system. Since this drug is the active metabolite, the excretion of this drug by renal system is important and around 80% of the drug is excreted by renal system. So this is important because any impairment of renal excretion may affect the activity of dabigatron. So in the patients with any renal impairment, the levels of dabigatron are highly increased which results in increased risk of bleeding in the patients. So dose adjustments are required based on the severity of renal impairment and again it depends on the type of clinical indication. For the treatment of non-valvular atrial fibrillation in the patients with renal impairment having creatine clearance 30 to 50 ml per minute, no dosage adjustment is required. But when the creatine clearance is in between 15 to 30 ml per minute, the dose of the drug should be reduced to half of the dose. 
and in those patients with creatine clearance less than 50 ml per minute this drug should be avoided so this is the condition of atrial fibrillation but in case of pulmonary embolism and deep vein thrombosis the dosage adjustment is somewhat different based on the creatine clearance in the patient with creatine clearance greater than 30 ml per minute no dosage adjustment is required but in those patients with creatine clearance less than 30 ml per minute this drug should be avoided here we can see that the limit is somewhat more in case of pulmonary embolism as well as deep vein thrombosis so even the moderate renal impairment this drug should be avoided where creatine clearance is less than 30 ml per minute and these limits can also be changed based on other factors such as co-administration with few of the other drugs for instance p glycoprotein inhibitors may further increase the levels of dabigatron thereby they require more stringent conditions and more dosage adjustments in case of pulmonary embolism as well as deep vein thrombosis the dosage adjustment can be done based on the creatine clearance rates in the patients with creatine clearance greater than 30 ml per minute no dosage adjustment is required it can be given with a normal dose but with moderate to severe renal failure with creatine clearance less than 30 ml per minute this dabigatron should not be given in patients with renal impairment this dabigatron should be carefully used but when it is combined with p glycoprotein inhibitors it further decreases the renal excretion of this drug resulting in the increased toxic effects so drugs like dronidarone ketoconazole when they are combined with dabigatron care should be taken in those patients with any renal impairment in such patients the creatine clearance should be closely monitored in case of treatment for non valvular atrial fibrillation this drug should be avoided in those patients with creatine clearance less than 30 ml per minute so this is the effect of co-administration with p glycoprotein inhibitors which further reduces renal excretion of this drug resulting in severe adverse effects similarly in case of pulmonary embolism and deep vein thrombosis still more stringent conditions are maintained in those patients with creatine clearance less than 50 ml per minute this drug should not be used so even with mild renal impairment the patient should not use the dabigatron along with p glycoprotein inhibitors since this drug acts as anticoagulant and the important precaution is that this drug may increase the risk of bleeding in the patients which is more pronounced with other pathological conditions so in those patients with pathological bleeding dabigatron produces very severe bleeding and it should not be used in such patients similarly if you have the drugs like heparin which is an iv anticoagulant aspirin which is antiplatelet agent fibrinolytics like alteplase urokinase these drugs when they are combined with dabigatron they can further increase the risk of bleeding so these drugs should be carefully used along with dabigatron in case of severe bleeding with dabigatron we have one of the agent ida resuzumab which is a reversal agent this drug forms a strong complex with the dabigatron because of more affinity it reduces the activity of dabigatron thereby it reduces the risk of bleeding that's why it acts as a reversal agent for dabigatron since this drug is a anticoagulant when this drug is prematurely discontinued it may increase the risk of thrombosis resulting in increased risk of stroke and pulmonary embolism so this drug should not be stopped suddenly without completing the course in order to avoid any sudden thrombotic events and the important precaution is that when this dabigatron is given for anesthesia it can be given by spinal puncture in such conditions again it may increase spinal hematoma or epidural hematoma which is highly fatal so anesthesia should be given when these drug levels are very low in the patients in case of any spinal anesthesia now let us see the side effects of this drug the important side effects are mainly related with gastrointestinal system so this drug may produce some abdominal pain dyspepsia abdominal discomfort GERD gastroesophageal reflux disorder esophagitis erosogastritis and even it can produce gastric hemorrhage gastric bleeding can be observed 
with this dabigatron. Even this drug can produce few of the hypersensitive reactions like skin rashes, urticaria, and pruritus can be produced by this drug. Even it can induce anaphylactic reactions where care should be taken. In case of development of any severe anaphylactic reactions, this drug should not be used in such patients. Now let us see how this drug acts. Within the blood vessels, factor 10A plays an important role in the coagulation cascade. This factor 10A is required for the activation of prothrombin. If you have the other factors like factor 5A, phospholipids and calcium, they can bind to the factor 10A which results in the activation of this factor. And when this factor is going to be activated, it can act on the prothrombin so that the prothrombin is going to be converted into another mediator factor 2A which is nothing but thrombin. So conversion of prothrombin to thrombin is mediated by factor 10A along with factor 7A phospholipids and calcium. This thrombin is highly required for conversion of fibrinogen which is the precursor for fibrin. This fibrinogen can be converted into fibrin mesh by action of thrombin. Now dabicatron is a thrombin inhibitor. It can bind to the factor 2A such that it inhibits the activity of this factor. When this factor is inhibited, the synthesis of fibrin mesh is inhibited, thereby clot formation is going to be inhibited. In this way, dabicatron acts as an anticoagulant, thereby it reduces the clot formation and it reduces thrombotic events in susceptible patients. How it is given? This drug is available as a capsule at different strengths such as 75 mg and 150 mg. The dose of the drug based on the clinical indication. For the treatment of non-volvular atrial fibrillation, it can be given at a dose of 150 mg twice daily. For the treatment of deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, again it can be given at a dose of 150 mg twice daily. But for the prophylaxis of DVT and pulmonary embolism, it can be given as a 110 mg dose initially on first day, followed by 220 mg dose given once daily on following days. But dosage adjustment can be done based on the renal impairment. Already we have discussed how we can give the dosage adjustment in the different clinical conditions. So that's all about this drug Dabicatron. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends, post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.